Callahan, a hybrid homeschool math teacher teaching only two days a week, still address content standards while incorporating online interactive curriculum in addition to project-based learning. I wanted to look at what type of authentic assessments could be used to help students set um, learning goals and action plans. This inquiry I did on equity and I developed a system of instruction to differentiate for different levels of uh, world language instruction in a non-track world language class. How does homogenous grouping help foster a rigorous, rigorous curriculum that meets the needs of all learners in the math classroom? What I was really trying to find was how grouping students who are working on the same level um, can help them grow and help them be engaged. How can I create a curriculum that is rigorous and engaging and meets uh, multiple needs and multiple skill levels? I collected um, anecdotal notes, so um, when I was walking through the classroom, um, observing behaviors, what was being said in groups during project time, um, also jotting down like what students were writing um, in their reflections. Um, I also collected student reflections um, in journals that we would do every day um, at the end of the day. I collected um, student rubrics and checklists that were created to assess the projects that we were doing. Um, I also did video of students either talking about their projects or um, working with one another so that we could like look back at that later on to see um, how they worked in groups. I had different types of, of student work, um, so different types of homework assignments that I collected to see um, how the students were progressing when they were working in their groups. Um, I also collected surveys to see how students liked working with, with, with groups as opposed to working independently. Um, and then I took a, a survey of, of an actual assessment assess students on their learning before they were working in groups, when they were working independently, and then I took another assessment um, that was similar, um, where, where they took a very similar test and saw how much they grew in between the two tests. The evidence that I collected uh, ranged from observations of student uh, Socratic seminars, student discussions, uh, student surveys, reflections, and uh, most importantly, the uh, final product student uh, work. Uh, the evidence that I collected was primarily online and project-based, so I utilized SurveyMonkey to try and gauge what exactly my students were getting out of the projects that we were doing and the online math we were using. I also incorporated IXL.com, which was an online math resource that also incorporates immediate feedback and reporting so I could, uh, you could see exactly how my students were doing with each week's work as opposed to just waiting for their homework to get graded and doing regular assessments. It was a more effective way for me to gauge student achievement. Um, I collected survey data, uh, did observations, had my mentor observe me, and then also collected um, or did informal interviews with students. Um, I believe that this type of structure really helps me meet the needs of all students. I found last year that I had a difficult time uh, meeting the needs of students who were just beginning Spanish language learning to those who were uh, native speakers and this type of model really helped me to uh, better meet the needs of all of my students. Well, one of the things I found was that my students were more successful and able to better retain information um, and improve reading comprehension when I made the uh, instructional group much smaller. So I split my class into two groups and would typically teach a lesson to no more than 12 students at a time. Uh, that allowed for me to provide better assessment, get to know my students much, much better, and provide more targeted, directed instruction for future lessons. So I will continue to apply that approach. Um, maybe next time, instead of focusing on writing, I'll focus more on uh, my reading program. So um, from this year, I really learned that students um, do their best work when they're able to um, talk to one another about um, what their goals were, and then to take the time in class to reflect on them. Um, to be really thoughtful about you know, what they've done and how to improve. 
So I think that I'll continue to do that next year. Um, an area that I want to improve on that is having students do more um, verbal uh, talks and critiques. Um, a lot of it that we did this year was written. And so I felt like students that were English learners didn't really have the opportunity to express themselves um, in front of an audience. And that's, so I think that that would make them feel not only more confident, but also really um, hone in on the um, kind of goals or skills that they wanted to. Based on my findings, I saw that students who are overall more engaged because I was diversifying the curriculum by incorporating online learning and project-based learning in addition to regular instruction. Because I was only teaching two days a week, I really felt pressured my first semester to try and hit a lot of contents and cover a lot of material. And I soon realized that my curriculum wasn't diversified enough. So the second semester, I, once I began to incorporate the online learning and project-based learning, I really saw uh, increase in the engagement of my students and the level of success that they were achieving was substantial. What surprised me was that students had grown a lot. The classroom seemed very social. If you walked in, the classroom wasn't a quiet classroom where students were sitting diligently working on their math homework. It was um, a lot of conversing. Um, initially, there was a lot of anxiety because it looked, it made it like you, if you walked in and, and you just heard noise, you would think like, oh man, are, are students really working? These three students are talking over here. Are they actually talking about work? Um, but what was surprising was students were really, really excited to work on these problems, to work through these problems, to help each other figure out what was what was going wrong. And because they were all on the same level, it was much easier for them to help each other out. Whereas if you have a really high skill learner and a really low skill learner, sometimes it's difficult to bridge the gap. Um, and then I was more of a, of a coach going around and helping individual groups and giving direct instruction to small groups. Not only were my high level students achieving more, but my low level students, my EL students, my special education students were also enjoying the online math and they were in some cases doing upwards of 200% more problems every week because they had the option of doing some of the online math at home. They felt like there was an opportunity for them to get their math and work done in between chatting on Facebook and talking with friends online. So um, that was one thing that really surprised me that my students at the lower levels were still able to increase achievement that much. What surprised me most, I think, was that this was one of the most important, um, the most, one of the most important outcomes was that I was better able to support um, my higher achieving students, the ones that really were eager to um, advance faster, that I was able to meet their needs more than I have been in the past, so I was happy about that. The probably number one surprising finding was that having these really authentic student-created assessments to kind of assess the project work that we are doing really helped build a classroom community. So students um, learned from one another, and it was more, you know, me stepping back and then really ru running the whole classroom, and um, they would mention to me, like, how the assessments made them feel like they could understand other perspectives from people, and that would help them improve on their work individually. Um, which I wasn't really expecting to hear them say. I thought it would be like more personal about how they've grown. Um, so they were really aware of like the other students in the class and I feel like it just really like closely knit our school, especially since this is our first year um, doing project based and our first year open. So I thought that you know, that was probably the most significant finding. What surprised me was that by changing that classroom dynamic and setting up some very simple structures, um, the level of student engagement dramatically increased. Um, it wasn't a matter of assigning homework anymore or even um, assigning extra credit options. Students were going above and beyond and emailing me in the evenings because they had questions. They were excited about their projects. So um, I was really pleased to see how much more engaged my students can be and I think even how um, how it changed the relationship to myself and my students. I felt like it really bonded the group because I got to really know them as individuals.